In this video here, we're going to take a look at modeling with statics. So for this video here, then this will be a very quick introduction to modeling with statics. As always for these modeling videos here within a level maths, we're not really introducing any new material or anything like that. So the introduction is often very quick and the same applies to this video here. So to get us started, then we need to just mention that we can use force diagrams to model real life situations and objects in static equilibrium and solve problems involving the following here. So we have weight, tension, and pulleys here. So these three points then, these are basically the three key ideas here then for modeling with statics. And often, and I've actually put this myself for this example within this video here, these types of questions here that are based around modeling with statics, often the question will be based around some kind of bead, as we can see here from our diagram, that's attached to some string, right? And from there, we might find, say, the mass or the weight of the bead, or something to do with the tension in the string, something based around that, right? And we'll see that in our example very shortly. So as we've mentioned then, in terms of an introduction here, we don't need too much more than that. So there we have it. That gives us everything that we need here for our introduction. Let's just take a look now at one example here for modeling with statics. So let's just take a look then at this one practice question here for modeling with statics. So for this question here, we're told that a smooth bead B is threaded on a light inextensible string. The ends of the string are attached to two fixed points A and C on the same horizontal level. The bead is held in equilibrium by a horizontal force of magnitude 10 newtons acting parallel to CA, and the string makes angles of 70 degrees and 20 degrees with the horizontal. So we can see all of that here on our diagram. So the question asks us to find two things here. So for part A then, we want to find the tension in the string. So we've got our diagram here. Let's just add our forces to this diagram and just basically make it a force diagram. So in the string here, right, we're going to have tension. That's what we want to find in part A. So we've got tension in the string here. That would be T newtons. And same again here. Okay, so again, T newtons there like so. And we also have the mass of the B, which is what we want to find for part B, but I'll add it on to my diagram anyway. So as a force here, that will be mg newtons here, like so. And what we also need to add on to our diagram here then is the horizontal and vertical components for these two forces here. Okay. So I've got my horizontal component like so. I've also got my vertical component like so. So this forms a right angle triangle here like so. So for the horizontal component here, well, the question is, what is this angle here, right? So what's this angle here? So using properties of parallel lines, then this angle here must be 20 degrees. They correspond, so that's 20 degrees there. In that case, if this is 20 degrees here, my horizontal component will be T cos of 20 degrees. And now for my vertical component here, that will be T sine of 20 degrees. Okay, hopefully nice and straightforward here just to get us started, just adding on the components for this force. And we're going to do the same here then with this force here. So let me do this one in a different color just so it's a little bit easier to see. I've got the horizontal components here, like so. And I've also got my vertical component. I'll do that in a different color here. Let's do it in blue. Like so. Okay, I'm a little bit off with my diagram, but you get the idea. And this forms a right angle triangle. Okay. So the question is, what is this angle here? Okay, well, again, just using properties of angles in parallel lines here, this angle must be the same as this angle here. So this angle here is 70 degrees. So in that case, then, my horizontal component here will be T cos of 70 degrees. So T cos of 70 degrees. And then for my vertical component here, this will be T sine of 70 degrees. Okay. So this here then just labeling the forces onto our diagram and splitting these two forces into components gives us a good starting point here then to answer this question. So for part A then to find the tension in the string here, what we're going to do is start by resolving horizontally here. So for part A then, we're going to resolve horizontally here T 
taken to the right as positive. Okay. So let's just consider then what forces are acting horizontally to the right here. Well, we have this force of T cos of 20 degrees here. So we have T cos of 20 degrees. We have no more forces acting to the right here. So we now consider what forces do we have acting to the left? Well, I've got this horizontal component here of T cos of 70 degrees. So because that force is now acting to the left here, that would be negative. We get minus T cos of 70 degrees. And don't forget, we do also have this horizontal force here of magnitude 10 newtons. So that's acting to the left here like so. So again, that would be negative here. So we get minus 10 there. And because the particle is held in um, equilibrium here, this is equal to zero here. Okay. So obviously what we want to do here now is solve for T, right? We're looking to find the tension in the string. So what I'm going to do then is add 10 to both sides to get us started. And I can also factor out the T, right? So we'll do it all in one step here. So I get T lots of cos of 20 degrees minus cos of 70 degrees is equal to 10. And then obviously we just want to find T here, right? We're just going to divide both sides by cos of 20 degrees minus cos of 70 degrees. So in that case then, T is equal to 10 all over. So as we've just said then, we get cos of 20 degrees here minus cos of 70 degrees. Okay, like so. So all you need to do here now is put this into your calculator here. And if you do this correctly then, and if we give our answer to say three significant figures here, what we get then is 16.7 newtons here. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution to part A here. That is the tension in the string. So now for part B then, we now want to find the mass of the bead here. So for the mass of the bead then, what we need to do is just resolve vertically here. Okay, so if we resolve vertically here, taking upwards as positive. Okay. So taking upwards as positive here, then what forces do we have that are acting vertically upwards? Well, I've got this vertical component here, right? Of T sine of 70 degrees. I've got T sine of 70 degrees. We also have this vertical component here of T sine of 20 degrees. I've got T sine of 70 degrees plus T sine of 20 degrees. These are positive, right? Because they're acting upwards and we took upwards as positive here. So we have no more forces then acting vertically upwards. So we now need to consider what forces are acting vertically downwards, which in this case is just a single force here of mg newtons. So we now subtract mg here, so minus mg. And again, this is all equal to zero here. Okay. So we're looking to find the mass of the B. So I want to solve for M here. I'm going to start by adding MG to both sides. So MG then is equal to, what I will do as well is factor out the T here as I go. So I get T lots of sine of 70 degrees plus sine of 20 degrees. Okay, like so there. So clearly then, if we just want the value of M here, the mass of the bead, I'm just going to divide both sides by G here, which we're using as 9.8, right? The question doesn't give us, um, you know, a specific value of G. So we'll just take G to be equal to 9.8. So in that case then, for the mass here, M, so M is equal to T times by sine of 70 degrees plus sine of 20 degrees, all divided by G, which is 9.8. So I get T lots of sine of 70 degrees here plus sine of 20 degrees. And that's all over G. Okay. So what I would do here, obviously for T is keep it in its exact form, right? So in its exact form, we've got 10 over cos of 20 degrees minus cos of 70 degrees. So in that case, then what I'm going to get here let me do it underneath for M. If we get that M is equal to, so T is 10 over cos of 20 degrees 
minus cos of 70 degrees. So I'm gonna get 10 lots of my numerator here. And that will be all over G times by this denominator here. So let me just put all that together here just so it doesn't sound too confusing. So I get 10 times by my numerator here of sine of 70 degrees plus sine of 20 degrees. Oops, sine of 20 degrees there, like so. And this is all over them. So what do we get here? Well, I get G times by this denominator here, and we're going to take G to be 9.8. So I get 9.8 times by cos of 20 degrees, cos of 20 degrees here, minus cos of 70 degrees. Okay, so all you need to do now is just put this into your calculator here. And if we do this to say, again, three significant figures here, what I get then is 2.19 kg here. Okay, and there we have it. So that gives the solution to part B. This was the solution to part A. And there we have it. So that gives the solution. There's one question here. And that actually brings the end then of this video here on modeling with statics.